think the thing about the journey of um, doing something new, it's new opportunity. You know, it's new opportunity to be able to start fresh. It's a new opportunity to be challenged differently. It's a new opportunity, but they're still the same mission. I think the same mission of doing the process. I think so many people, they get lost in the sense that they don't want to do the process anymore or they've done it successfully, especially as good as you've been or decent as I've been. You know, it's like it, it becomes one of those things you forget about the process, you know, and I think what I love coming here and just seeing the guys and being around them is the guys are addicted to the process and that makes it that makes it, you know, exciting for me. But at the end of the day, nothing else matters. All the talk, all the stuff outside, that's good. You know, it's good and it's exciting. Um, but the only thing is we got to determine that every day here. Yeah. And I think you'd set the tone on that on defense, um, just watching you. And I've always admired you, obviously. And uh, that's what that's what ball's all about. Yeah. No, it's the same. It's crazy how uh, similar journeys can be, even though they're completely different, you know, from an outside looking in perspective. I think... You know, for me being here, you know, for seven years, uh, this is going into my into year seven. It's just been like just mediocre, subpar, and that just stinks because you come I got here right after the Super Bowl and you could feel the electricity around the city, um, around the town. This is a this is a football led city. And um, ever since then, it's just been average. I mean, nine and seven my first year. And then since then, haven't hit 500. And uh, I mean, haven't even, you know, sniffed the playoffs. And so I think, like you said, like all the excitement, all the energy is great. But we're the ones that control it, yeah. you know, and you got to attack it. And that's what I love, you know, out there in practice. I mean, we're, we're, we're competing, we're drawing back and forth. But it's all so much fun for me because... I can feel every year, you know, you're asked like, hey, you know, how are you guys feeling this year? And you always are going to say like, man, I feel good. Like, I think it's going to be a great year. I like who we got. But I, I really feel that way. I really locked in with it. I mean, we're being led by, uh, in my opinion, Hall of Fame quarterback. I think there's no doubt. Hall of Fame quarterback. And we got all the right pieces on offense, defense, special teams, the coaches. I mean, the, the, the staff here is amazing. It's just going to be up to us, man. Go out there and I don't care what it looks like. 40-something to 40-something, 7 nothing. as long as we win those games, man. OTAs are critical because of the bonding part of it. You know, the, the part that you get to spend time on the field and there's, you know, all 11 guys in the huddle and you put all 11 guys on the other side of the defense. And that, that feeling, that this game is meant to be played within the lines, you know, within the boundaries, you know, it's, it's, it's that feeling of that. And so I think, I think that's what we're, you know, learning. And then also too, the part that you, that unrelenting belief that is necessary to keep winning, to do it throughout a whole season, 17 weeks, hopefully 21, hopefully 22 weeks. Well, to do that, uh, you have to create that and you have to sustain that and you have to be able to think through that. And what did we do here? What did we pull from there? And I think that's what we're building and creating. I think also too, obviously with new coach, uh, Coach Hackett, um, you know, obviously for me being here, you know, I, I could imagine not having OTAs this year, but um, for be, me being here personally um, to watch, you know, his leadership is really cool. I think that that's kind of changed the, the, uh, the evolution of this team, I think, and where we can go just because of his energy, his, his enthusiasm, the assistant coaches as well. Um, and the city's buzzing. And so we gotta, we gotta match that. And we got to super, you know, seed that. We got to, you know, um, break those expectations. There's a few things that I think a winning team has to have. I think, first of all, they have to be able to flip the switch. There's a switch that's always on, and then at times you have to know when to turn it off, and then it's back on. And there's not an effort to turn it back on. It, it just comes on. And I think that's what we're really le learning and capturing. You know, uh, I think the defensive has always had that. I think offensively, we're really learning that right now, and it's it's coming along. And so I think that switch has got to know when to turn that switch on, and really it should be on almost all the time. There's another part that I think that is you got to have, you know, you got to have, and I think that's, you know, unrelenting belief. You know, I think the best teams in the world, they have unrelenting belief. doesn't matter what the score is. doesn't matter what it looks like. doesn't matter what happened the week before. doesn't matter what happened. Like we're gonna believe, and that's 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 it. There is no other options. Yeah, I love man that the unrelentless belief. That's that's powerful. I've never I've never even really thought about it. You know, from that perspective, um, I think I think for me, you know, when I'm looking at great leaders, um, I like guys that are true to who they are, and they do that at the highest level. And so for me, man, like I've been around I've been around some really great 
defensive leaders that I think have kind of helped all in their in their own ways, like shape me into into the man that I am, both both on and off the field. You now, guys like T.J. Ward, uh, Darian Stewart. Um, I mean, Kareem has been an amazing example for me as a player. Um, I mean, his attention to detail and, you know, he he probably talks a little bit more than me out there on the field, but, you know, his attention to detail and how he approaches the game. And I mean, the way that he the way that he always is looking to coach up a younger guy, but it's not but he's not looking to do it in a setting where, like, you know, a coach will see it or a few other players will see it. I just happen to be in the right place at the right time. And I mean, same with you. I think I think guys also that that can take accountability in the moment. Right. Like that's huge. You, you're in a you're in a team meeting and we're going over plays. You know, Coach Haggett has a play up there on the board. And uh, hey, you know, like we may need this mean this ball out a little bit faster. And like, hey, you know, you know, Vontae, that's on me. You know, in the middle of the meeting, like you have a first time you have some rookies in there that are like, oh, hey, Russ can mess up. You know, I, I need to get my stuff together. You know what I mean? And those those types of things, I think that's what a leader looks like. You can have the the speeches and, and all those things going on. But I think you're you're consistently being the same guy every day and not only making, you know, the guys around you better, but you're making yourself better by holding yourself up to that standard every single day. You said the 1%, that 2%, whatever it may look like. I think that's what really, that's what really elevates guys in the team. And it's just great having all that. Part of it too is, I think for me and you, we have an obligation to make the young guys who are new, new players who are coming from different teams, whatever it may be. I, I, I want to see every guy be successful, like maximize every day. So that way they give their family, their young boy or young girl one day, a chance to do whatever they want to do in life. And I think that, that that's like something that I've, it's been really something that, you know, when I'm, when I'm, we get to spend time and go over plays or talk about life, talk about decisions, this and that, whatever is going on in your world. A guy's worlds, you know, it's that's what that's what it's about, you know. So using the experiences that I've gone through, which has been a lot of great ones, there's also been some tough ones and tough decisions to be made and this and that, and um, you know, and then from there to be able to to, to have influence, to kind of be a big brother in a way. Um, I think that's something that you. I think I've, I've always noticed you do in the locker room. You're on the other side of the locker, but I, I see you when I come around the corner, and you're always talking to those guys. And I think, you know, in this world today in 2022, it's like. You know, there's a lot of high low. There's a lot of high low. There's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of life that happens, and we can't forget about life for guys too. And uh, I think a lot of times fans forget about the life of guys. You know, they, they just want to see production, which is important. We want to see that. Uh, we need to see that. Um, you know, that's why we do it every day, and that's the job we, we're called to do. I think also too, there's an amazing blessing in this that um, man, we, we want to be better men, and if we can be great men, it allows us to do that. And the last thing I gotta say is this guy needs to be man of the year. <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, I've seen all the things, no, seriously, I'm not even joking. I've seen all the things you've done um, in the community. I've seen all the things that you've done uh, just from afar, just um, <laughs> all the things that from from social justice, um, you know, it, it's, it's been powerful. I remember stand, seeing you stand on the steps, man, this is powerful, it meant something. I, you know, I've been fortunate to been, be around guys like Jim Brown and Muhammad Ali's of the world and just I've had moments with those guys and you know and Bill Russell he lived in Seattle you know I got to spend time with him and he always talked about two things Bill Russell did he talked about number one is, is that my job is to make my teammates better he said he always said and the number two things is, is he said is, is that I got to make I got to make the, the my community better my country better and I think that you do that and um, you're, you're a great reflection of that I always heard it I've always seen it I've always admired it but then also too now to be on the same team with you. Uh, you don't just do it in the locker room, but you also do it in the community every day. And it, and it means a lot. All the things you do at the Boys and Girls Club, like you you, you really do deserve. I, I just want you to keep going. You know, uh, you know, in the Bible, it always talks about, uh, <clears throat> you know, the first will be last and the last will be first. You know, and just, I want you to know that continue to stay the course because you're making a difference in people's lives, man. And uh, we're gonna win this thing too. Dang. You know, that's the plan, we're gonna win this that's thing. That's the plan, but, uh, make no just, question about it. It's, it's cool to, to what you're doing off the field has even more impact than all the pro bowls and all the all pros and all the interceptions you're gonna make and, yeah. all, the, and all the stuff you're gonna do. That's 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 bigger. So yeah. just wanted to say that. That's real. Man, I appreciate Love that, you, man. Love yeah, you, brother. Sure. Appreciate you.